Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our test project course. And in this video we'll be talking about working with add-ons. And this is part two of our working with add-on video that we discussed in our previous video because add-on itself is going to be a vague concept and we have to understand add-ons much clearly before we can start working with it. So in our last video we did create a complete setup of working with add-ons on test project like these things. So in order to recollect what we did in our previous video, we did download all the dependencies like the test project SDK jar file and also we downloaded the manifest file from the add-on that we created in our previous video. And in this video we actually have to do this. We have to set up the Maven correctly to exclude the dependency and include the necessary settings. That's what we're going to do in this video. So before doing that, the following things we need to know while working with Mavens. Since Maven uses palm.xml file for configuration. Here are the following that we need to do as a part of Maven configuration. The first thing is we need to add the test project SDK jar dependency. That's very, very important because this jar dependency is what's going to be helpful for us to get all the references. And then we need to create build section with the Maven assembly plugin. That's very important because that's where you can do packaging, cleaning, compiling your project itself. So it's that's what the Maven workflow is all about. So we're going to do that as well. And then we also need to add the descriptor.xml file. Now you can ask me what is this descriptor.xml file and why do I need to add that in our project? Well, the descriptor.xml file is more like a manifest file or maybe a metadata file which is used to tell that you need to exclude certain file from test project SDK file and also you need to include some of the properties file of the test project SDK. So don't worry about it yet. We are going to discuss about that in a minute now, but this is what it is. So these are the things that we need to have while working with Maven itself. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Chrome browser. All right, so this is our Chrome browser and in our last video, we downloaded this SDK. But before that, as I said, for the Maven, if you go to this test project, I will GitHub from here, this particular URL, that you can see here. You can see there is an option called packaging with maven.md. So if you click this guy, you can see there are some cool informations which is required for you to get started with working with Maven in your project. So basically, as you can see, this particular palm.xml file, you need to add the dependency. And then if you have any other dependency other than the test project SDK jar file, you can also include that. And then you also need to add the build section where you can specify the Maven assembly plugin. And then you need to copy the test project SDK properties file uh, from the uh, SDK. So for that, you need to have one more configuration and all those stuffs can be done from here, right? So this is the descriptor.xml file that I was talking about. You need to copy that within your main package folder. So once this is done, you are pretty much good to go with working with Mavens. So we are probably going to do that as well. So as that said, we are going to start working with this guy in our project. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE, this one. So this is the project that we were talking about in our previous video. We created this whole structure of how to work with add-ons. So we also created this resource folder and the runner folder. So if you remember in our previous video, I downloaded the manifest file from the add-ons folder, right? So if you go to the add-ons here, and this is the one which I was talking about, the click menu link add-on that we created. So I downloaded this manifest file, and let's quickly see what this manifest file is going to look like. So if you could see here my manifest file, let me just copy this guy, and let me go all the way to my project. Let me go here to the resources folder. So I'm just going to right click, uh, show in Explorer, and I'm just going to paste this here. And let me rename this to manifest.json. All right. And let me open this and see how it looks like. All right. So this is the manifest.json file that we just downloaded. So if you recollect from our previous video, we gave two permissions for our add on. The one is with the file system, and another one was with the environment. Right, so these two permissions is sitting in here, and there's a GUID which is basically to recognize your add-on more uniquely. So it is also available over here, 
and the version we gave us 1.0 so it's also available over here right so this is a manifest file which we just downloaded from our add-ons of this project right so I have placed that in here within our project cool and then we are going to start creating or maybe working with our palm.xml file. So this palm.xml file is going to be pretty much exactly how the guidelines are mentioned here. As you can see how to work with the Maven. So I'm just going to do that. But for the sake of time, I have already created the palm.xml file so that we can easily get started with that. So I'm just going to copy paste that over here. So let me do that. So you can see that I can quickly walk you through how it looks like. So it says that the Maven project needs to be imported. So it says import changes. I'm just going to hit this enable auto import because it's kind of very, very easy to get started with. So once you enable that, you can see that it's going to add all the external uh, references for me. Very, very cool. And also you can see that it is automatically adding the uh, jar file for me. So this jar file is nothing but my uh, jar file that we downloaded in our previous video, as you can see here. It is in my downloads folder right so it says this is the maven test project that's the artifact id and uh, you can see that there is a build of source directory this one src and we are saying that this is a maven assembly plugin uh, and it is going to have a descriptor.xml file so i don't really have it yet so i'm going to put that one in a couple of minutes and it says it's a make assembly uh, execution id and there is a package so this is a phase of our execution and I'm going to say the goal is single and the compiler plugin is going to be this version, right? Very, very simple and straightforward. I don't really have any dependencies other than my test project itself. And then the descriptor.xml file. So that's the one which is pretty much important. So I'm just going to create that as well. So let me go over here to the main folder and I'm going to create this guy as a file it's descriptor.xml file and then i'm just going to copy paste some of the values that i just copied from the github so i'm just going to paste it over here right so as you can see this descriptor.xml file is going to be pretty much simple and straightforward as well it's uh, not all a big deal so basically all it does is this so it's going to say that it's going to include all the uh, dependencies for me and then it is going to include this particular uh, test project java sdk and it's also going to include it's going to unpack the file from this particular sdk and it's going to include this particular properties file for me and also it is going to say that exclude the test project sdk from the resulting jar file because the test project jar file is going to be like 32 mb and there is a restriction in test project right now that it cannot include so many big file within the add-on folder. So we are going to exclude the test project SDK file. And it also makes sense because test project cloud already has the test project dependencies and all those APIs. So it doesn't really require to have the SDK file with it. So it's going to exclude the SDK file as well. So that's why there is this particular exclude option for us. So we are going to exclude that as well as a part of our build process. Right, so all of them have been already excluded and we already have all the descriptor.xml file over here. So we are pretty much good to go now. So our environment setup is almost done. So we have included our manifest file and we have this descriptor.xml file and our prompt.xml file is also ready. Almost everything is pretty much good to go. The only thing that we need to do right now is to start working with our add-ons. So basically our add-on is going to be a very, very simple add-on. As I already said, it's going to click all the menu options from our web page very very simple so for starting to work with add-on as I said before you need to have a clear understanding of Java and selenium because it's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing that we are going to be doing things so I'm going to call this as if I could remember correctly we named this as click menu links so I'm just going to give exactly the same name this time menu links and I'm going to hit OK so this is going to be the class file that we include here and now come the SaaS of test project itself. We are going to call this as an action. And the name of the action is going to be the click menu links. So this is the name that you're going to be seeing in the UI of the test project when you're going to start working with it. And you can see that there's an option called IO test project Java annotation version 2. 
So I'm going to hit Alt Enter and I'm going to include that particular package for me over here, right? So this is an action type right now. So if you could recollect in our previous videos of our test project course, we were discussing how we can work with different types of steps. So let me recollect that. So if I go to the test case here, we said there's a type called element action and there is an action and there is a test, right? So this element action, element action is going to be the action that is already available out of the box within test project. But there are other types like actions. So if you select this guy, you can see that you can select the action which is going to be from test project community or from your own add-ons or by the out of the box action which is available within test project. So if you're going to write any one of the add-ons in your case, you are going to choose from the actions element type from here. So for that reason, we are calling this guy as an action. So this particular class is now an action class. And within this action, I'm going to perform our operation of clicking all the menus in the navigation bar. So if I go to the application right now, which is nothing but the EA app and let me log in and you can see that this time we are going to click all these particular hyperlinks from here. So let me see what is this particular menu bar is all about. So if I just inspect the element here, you can see that this guy is actually a name bar fixed top. So I can use this CSS class to identify this particular element. So let me do that. So this is going to be pretty much exactly the Selenium things here. And then I'm going to identify all the hyperlinks from this one, right? So it's going to be pretty simple and straightforward coding here. So I'm going to start working with it. But let me also increase the font size here because it seems like the font size is very, very small. So I'm just going to increase the font size maybe. All right, seems like it's much visible this time. So the first thing we need to do while starting to work with this particular add-ons is to implement what is called as a web action. So this particular interface is very, very important to start working with the web add-ons. So you can see that once I implement this particular interface, it's going to show me an error message here. So let me hit Alt Enter. So it's going to say that implement methods. So I'm just going to implement this particular execute method. So this execute method is going to be more like an initiation point for our code to start working with it. So you can see that this particular method is going to have this particular uh, execute method and it's going to have an parameter as web add-on helper. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create an instance for our web driver. So as you can see, since this particular code, we are going to be first developing within our local machine and then we're going to test it and see how this code is going to basically work in my local machine by using my own local test project agent. So I need to have this web drivers instance variable. So I cannot just use the web driver driver is equal to new Firefox driver or new Chrome driver or something like that because that's going to be my own Selenium. But this time we are not even going to include the Selenium jar file here in our project. We have just included the test project SDK jar file and we have not included any one of the code from the Selenium or something like that, right? So this is purely a test project jar file. So how to get the Selenium's web driver reference? So for that purpose, we actually have what is called as a web driver. Driver is equal to, there is something called as, as you can see here, the web add-on helper. So I'm just going to call this guy dot, you can see there is something called as get driver. So this get driver method is going to return as the web driver instance. So here you can specify what kind of web driver instance that you require for which browser you basically require. But basically the browsers options like Chrome browser or the Firefox browser, you're going to specify in the driver type while you're going to start using this particular add-on. But as of now, don't worry about it yet. So we're not going to deal about that. This is how you can actually get the driver instance of the code. So web driver instance. So this is where it's going to happen, right? And once you get the web driver instance, now you can do whatever code that you're going to play around with it, right? That's going to be very, very simple. So I'm just going to click all the elements within this particular navigation bar. So I'm just going to call a web element and then I'm going to call this as menu. 
and then I'm gonna call this driver, this particular driver, and then I'm just gonna call this find elements by dot CSS selector. And the CSS selector is something that we just saw while we were trying to understand how this particular element can be identified. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it over here. There you go. Very, very simple, right? So once this particular menu item exists, so I'm just gonna do a uh, condition check here. Menu is displayed, then continue. If not, just you can exit out from this one, right? And then I'm just gonna write one more for each this time. And this particular for each, I'm just gonna include this one. Menu dot find elements. And within this element, as you can see, all the menu items are actually available within the li of my particular menu parent. So you can see it's all in li, right? So I'm just gonna find the li here using what is called as a tag name. And you can see I'm quickly running through this particular Selenium things because we are not here to discuss the Selenium concept, rather we are here to discuss how the add-ons basically work. So I'm just gonna quickly skip through all these things. We have already discussed about working with Selenium in Java in much greater detail in my Exit Automation YouTube channel. So you can watch that, it's free or there are so many online resources available and even test project is much easier enough to help you out with working with Selenium. So you can use the documentation of test project itself, it's much easier. But I'm just quickly gonna skip all these options here and then I'm gonna show you how you can click all the hyperlinks. So in order to click all the elements, from this particular hyperlink, we need to store all these elements so that I can then perform the click operation. So I am going to store within what is called as a array list here. So this is uh, a nice way of dealing with the multiple elements. You can store into an array list and then you can work with it. So I'm just gonna add the elements text here into the menu items array, right? So once I have added them, and then I can perform the click operation here. So click all the headings is going to basically happen in this particular place. So that's gonna be another for loop, or maybe for each loop. And then I'm just gonna call the headings. And the heading is gonna be the menu items here. And here I'm just going to call this driver dot find element by text, which is nothing but the link text. And then I'm going to call this heading and I'm going to perform the click operation here. Very, very simple and super simple straightforward code here. So this is kind of very, very generic code because this particular piece of code can be used by any one of the code, which is going to have this particular navigation bar name. And I have also missed the dot here because it's CSS. And once this is done, finally, you can see there is an error here because we need to return the execution result as passed. That's it. So this is how you can create a very, very super simple add-on for your code. So our add-on is ready right now. We need to test this add-on and see how this add-on is going to perform the click operation on the menu items. So for that, we need to write our code in what is called as runners and then we need to write a test to see how all these codes basically work which we'll be discussing in our next videos guys and once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day